from Washington. Well, let's talk about some of the market's impact of this. This time we'll take a look at the bond market, U.S. Treasuries in particular. Mark Bailey from Fig Securities is joining us now. And Mark, good morning to you. I mean, bond prices last week tumbling as Trump was elected. You've brought a chart in to talk to us about this U.S. Treasuries market. Um, we're going to bring it up on screen right now. Perhaps you can just for the benefit of our viewers, tell us what we're looking at. Yeah, good morning, Dean. So this is um, the way that the U.S. Treasury um, bond market has moved since uh, before uh, Trump was elected and afterwards. So the, the higher line uh, is, is the current position uh, on Thursday. Obviously, the U.S. market was closed on Friday. And what you can see there is in the, in the last week, we've seen a bear steepener. And so what that means is that the, the curve has not only shifted higher, but uh, has also steepened in terms of there has been a higher increase in those yields in the longer end from the 7 to the, the 30 year. There's probably been around about a 32, 33 basis point increase in yields, which is, which is really, really significant. Uh, and in terms of a basis point move, it kind of is it on a similar scale as we saw during the 2013 taper tantrum. Uh, but much less uh, movement in the shorter end. So that's why the curve has steepened. And the reason for this is because um, the market believes that uh, Trump will increase its fisc uh, his fiscal spending of the U.S. government, and that will potentially uh, lead to inflation. Uh, and obviously inflation and potentially higher interest rates from the Fed down the line will impact the longer end of the curve uh, in a more significant way than the, the shorter end. Uh, in that regard, um, We've been telling investors to, to move uh, shorter uh, for the last uh, several months because at, the, at that stage the risks uh, uh, were very asymmetric in terms of the, the risk to the downside was significantly uh, higher than the, than the upside of where current yields are. And that's probably still the case. We, I still think there's going to be a further steepening of the curve as, as markets, uh, investors and participants still try to position for that uh, future uh, fiscal spend. However, having said that, I'm not actually convinced that inflation is going to come through as quickly and as dramatically as people think. Now, if, the reason for that, if you wind back the clock to QE, back to 2008, 2009, and you know, everybody thought with all this monetary stimulus we would see inflation coming through. And that certainly did not happen. It kind of almost rewrote some of the uh, monetarist uh, textbooks. Um, and so I'd, I'm, not, I'm not convinced that even if you do have fiscal spending coming through in the United States, you, will you get inflation in the States? And then that, will that inflation be exported into the other economies of the world, given the current amount of slack that you're seeing in labor markets in Europe, uh, less resting obviously in Australia? I'm not convinced that you're going to see inflation coming through. So at some stage, it may be a time to move uh, into uh, longer dated duration bonds. But at the moment, that's not the case. So when it comes to your analysis about inflation and the likely story, I mean, is that just speaking to this paradigm shift that we still don't need, know the X factor as to why we're not seeing that inflation translating as perhaps would have been expected through QE and perhaps, as you surmise, won't be necessarily um, coming from this massive spending we're expecting to come from Trump? I mean, why is that? It, it, it's, it's still not clear. Um, I, I think, you know, in terms of inflation, you know, the, the world at the moment is su such a, a more global economy. You know, in terms of people and their purchasing decisions, they know what each of those individual items costs and whether they can source that cheaper from the States or from China or uh, within, within Australia, for example. And they know before they go into uh, any kind of shop or any kind of decision that information is much more freely available than it was 10, 15, 20 years ago where you, know, you had really no idea of whether the price that you were paying in your local store was a good price, a bad price, you know, what the reviews were on, the, on that individual product. So I think there's a lot more information out there and that is helping to make uh, consumers and purchasers uh, have a better informed decision making process and have a better idea about price and if they can source that cheaper elsewhere. And if they can, they're not afraid to, to use that alternative source. But I'm just questioning, because it's not just consumer inflation that we're talking about, though. We're talking about, you know, the prices that producers pay as well. And if we continue to see commodities move in some of the manner that they have as of late, that could stoke 
inflationary global inflationary pressures could it not absolutely you can certainly see some kind of cost push inflation coming through and one of the key uh, determinants of another cost push in, in inflatory factor is, is wages and that wage growth will be a, a key figure that the Fed will look for in, in the December uh, non-farm payrolls as it was in, in the November one. So you can certainly see some kind of inflation pressure being put through. But again, the, the ability for um, you know, producers and manufacturers to pass those price increases through does become much more limited in the sense that you know those consumers do have that more information and there's still quite a bit of slack I think in the in the jobs market globally that will you know limit any kind of wage uh, uh, inflation coming through in terms of wage growth although we are seeing a, bit, a few signs in the states and that's obviously one area to watch but at the moment I'm not I'm still not convinced that we're going to see inflation coming through as rapidly and as quickly as the market has priced in in terms of some of the dramatic moves that we've seen uh, but I think we will still continue to see investors expecting and positioning their bond portfolios for that inflation to come through. Okay, we'll have to pick this conversation up another day because we're just scratching the surface of it as usual, Mark. But I um, appreciate your time this morning. Thanks indeed. Have Mark a good Bailey one. Mark Bailey there joining us from FIG.